In this episode, we're going to look at reCAPTCHA, which is a way of verifying that a user is accessing your site instead of a bot, and this is extremely helpful in situations where you are trying to allow users to sign up for an account on your website. However, you have recently started noticing that there's a lot of spam coming in on your website with bots signing up for accounts. And CAPTCHA is an acronym which stands for Completely Automated Public Turing Test to Tell Computers and Humans Apart. And so most commonly we refer to it as CAPTCHA or in this case, we're going to be using the Google's reCAPTCHA API. And so the basic idea is when we go to sign up for an account, we can put in our username, we can enter a password, and if we try to sign up, we can see that the reCAPTCHA failed, please try again. And then if we click on I'm not a robot checkbox, it'll do a no captcha recaptcha and it'll allow me to sign up for an account. If it did notice some awkward behavior with me clicking on that checkbox or being within that frame, then it would have posted an image for me to solve where it usually says something like click all the pictures that have a bus or bicycle or something similar. And so recently, I have a few side projects that I work on and I noticed that some of those sites have been getting bombarded with a lot of spam users. These actors haven't done anything with those accounts, however it is still annoying and it's also potentially dangerous even if they're not doing anything to my account specifically, but what usually happens is that a bot will sign up a particular email address for a bunch of different accounts all over the internet as a way to flood a certain individual's mailbox. And by doing that, they can prevent that user from seeing an email that's really important, like unusual activity on their bank account, and they may miss that because of the flood of emails coming in. So even if there's no damage happening on your site, it is important to take into consideration of the email addresses that are coming into your site and how they are potentially used. And so reCAPTCHA is not a foolproof solution because there are situations where a bot is actually able to solve the CAPTCHA a small percentage of the time. However, from my experience, bots are getting smarter and doing something like a honeypot will ward off a certain number of bots. And I think that is a good first step. However, if you do find a lot more bots coming in and signing up for accounts, then you may need to step it up a bit and go with something like reCAPTCHA. And so there are two main versions of reCAPTCHA. There's a version two and a version three. The version three is going to be a bit more of a constant check throughout the application. It's going to be a lot better, but it could also cause some issues and be a bit more invasive on your site. Personally, I'm only interested when a user signs up for an account and I want to verify that they are not a bot, so I'm going to stick with the version 2 checkbox. And did you know that you can go to railstore.com to get your own Ruby on Rails t-shirt or your Drift and Ruby t-shirt. So be sure to check that out and use the promo code RUBY for free shipping within the United States. And so the first step is to add the reCAPTCHA gem to our gem file. And we can do that with a bundle, add, reCAPTCHA. And because I am on Rails 6, and this also was available in Rails 5, I'm going to use my credentials to store my API keys. And I want to create an environment for my development so I'm not having to share out the master key, which would normally be used for my production. So with a Rails credentials, colon edit, and then passing in the environment as development, you can see that creates a config credentials development.key and it'll also create a development.yaml.encrypted. And so within here, we can call something like a reCAPTCHA underscore site key. And then we're also going to need a reCAPTCHA and then a secret key. And so there's two ways that we can do this. We could set environment variables and they would just simply be the reCAPTCHA site key and the reCAPTCHA secret key or we can do it within the credentials and then use a configurator to then set these within our application. And that's the route that I'm going to go with. And I'll post a link to this in the show notes, but we then need to create and register a new site that we're going to be using the reCAPTCHA. So I'll give it a label. I'll select the reCAPTCHA version two. 
and I'll just stick with the I'm not a robot challenge. We then need to give it a domain. Since I'm just doing this for my local host, I'll just specify the local host, and then I'll accept the recapture terms and service after I read through that. Submitting this, we'll then get our API keys, which we can copy that and paste it into our application. And we can do the same for the secret key. Saving our file, we now have our encrypted credentials on the development environment. And it is important to note that for this example application, I have created a very basic device setup where I basically just added the device gem. I created a user model and then ran the device generator for that user model. And then in the config initializers, I'll create a recaptcha.rb file where we'll then call the recaptcha.configure. We'll create a block and then we can set the site key and we'll set this equal to the rails.application.credentials and then we can call our recaptcha underscore site underscore key and then we can also set up our secret key and that's going to be the same thing except we'll just use the key recaptcha secret key and then we can close out our block. So then let's go ahead and add the recaptcha to our device view for when we sign up. So we can generate the device views and this will create a folder within our app views for our device. We're interested in the registrations and on the new. Chances are that you already have some styling within here and this is going to be a fairly simple markup that we have to do where we can do a flash for any error messages and the flash that we want to listen for is the recaptcha error. We then call the recaptcha underscore tags. And this would insert in the appropriate JavaScript to initialize and then start verifying the recaptcha. And so when the user clicks the checkbox, that's all happening on the client side and between Google and the client user. So we need to make sure that when this user submits this form, that it's also going to pass back some of this recaptcha information that we can then verify it. So within our routes.rb file, I'm going to override the controllers with our registrations controller. And I'm just going to point this to the namespace users, and then we'll target the registrations controller. And so again, when the user clicks the checkbox, whether it passes or fails, we are essentially trusting whether or not recaptcha is telling us if this user is a bot or not. So with the registrations controller, that's going to be where we are creating the user so the form is signing up. If you also want to implement this on the sign in, then you would also need to override the sessions controller as well. But continuing on, in our controllers, we can create a new folder called users. And then within here, we can create a file called registrations underscore controller dot rb. And this registrations controller is going to be a class users, and then the registrations controller, and we're going to inherit from the device registrations controller. So within here, the create action is where we are normally going to create the user and do all of our verification. However, there's no need for us to override that because really we just want to have a prepend before action. And we'll just call this the check captcha. And we only want to do this on the create action. So we can have a private method and within our private method, we can do a check unless verify captcha. And so this verify recaptcha is going to basically return true or false. And if it doesn't validate, meaning that there is an issue with the recaptcha, then we need to do some things where we can call the self dot resource is equal to the resource class dot new and we can pass in the sign up params. We then also call the resource dot validate to check to see if there's any other validation errors. We can then call the set minimum password length and then we can respond with the navigational for the resource and we would want to render new, which would take us back to the sign up form. And so testing this out now, we can go to sign in, sign up for an account. We see our recaptcha. We can enter a user with a valid password, and then we can click the I'm not a robot. The check happens, and we can sign up successfully. 
So let's test this again. But this time I won't check the box. We'll sign up. And then we get the recapture verification failed. Please try again. And so again, one thing that I would first try to do is to have some sort of honeypot. And that's basically just going to be an empty field on your sign up where you can then check to see if a user has filled that out or not. If that form field was filled out, then likely it came from a bot and you could just redirect the bot back to your root path or something and no user account would have been created. But if they are smart enough to bypass that, then stepping up to something like reCAPTCHA can help reduce spam on your website. And typically, I really don't like using gems if I can avoid them. However, one thing that I like about the reCAPTCHA gem is if we look at its dependencies, for the actual application runtime, it's only requiring JSON. And so this is one example of a gem that I wouldn't mind adding into my application because it is giving me a lot of functionality that I don't have to worry about. But also, it's extremely light on its dependencies to where I wouldn't worry about this gem causing a problem when I'm upgrading my Rails application in the future. Well, that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching.